In this tutorial, we'll look at the different grids you can create in Grasshopper. So um, the basic one is the square grid, and you can find these all whoops, under the um, vector grids category. So vector grids, and these are the different grids you can make. So you can make a, a radial grid, um, a square grid, a rectangular grid, hexagonal, or triangular. delete these ones. And all these grids work pretty much the same way where you have to add um, the plane which by default will be the XY plane, the size of the grid cells, the distance of each grid, the width and height of each grid, and then also um, the extent, so how many grids in the, in the X direction and how many grid uh, cells in the Y direction. So I'll just preview these ones off really quick and we'll just look at the square grid first. So the square grid um, if we do a slider for the size, this can be any value because it's a dimensional value. So it could be, let's do uh, 5 is less than 20.00, so it can be a floating point number. Um, and that'll be the size of each cell, so the width and the length. And then this, um, for the x and y, that's a count, so the number of cells. So this will be an integer, so we can have a minimum of one cell. So let's do 1 less than 20 and then we can copy and paste that for the different um, EX and EY values. So if I increase that you can see it increases the number of cells and I increase this it increases the number of cells in the Y direction. So it's going to be the same for all of these so let's just look at some others. I'll preview that off. We'll just um, copy and paste these and uh, for the size we'll say 5. Uh, in this case this is a radial grid so this um, is for the radial direction so we can add that in you can see what that does. Let's preview it on. And um, so you can see by changing that, it's like the rings of the tree, um, and that increases the number of rings. And then this one increases the number of divisions. So you can see these kind of lines that project out radially from the center. So you can increase or decrease that number. Let's preview that one off, and let's copy and paste. So the next one is a rectangular grid, works very much like the square grid. You have a size, but in this case you can def define the, um, the x dimension, which is the length, and then also the width separately. So it's rectangular and not square. So you can change that dimension by changing that slider. Um, otherwise the, the x and y extents are the exact same as the square. So that's just going to be the count in each direction. The next one is the hexagonal grid. So I'll just copy and paste these. This is a grid of uh, hexagons, like a honeycomb pattern. So again, the P, the plane, is just going to use the default XY. For the size, we'll use one of these sliders. I can delete this one. And then we have the count in the X and Y direction. You can see what that produces there. So that's the size of the cell, and then the X, the number in the X direction, the number in the Y direction. The final one is the triangular grid. So I'll just copy and paste these here preview that off and then we can preview the triangular grid on. So this one um, for the size it's like a diagrid so you can see it's a series of triangles that are equilateral. I can then change the number in both directions uh, so I can have uh, that many in the X and then this many in the Y. Another really useful thing is to see the points on the um, on the grid. So for example, if I use this component, it's called point, well let's find it here, under display, if you go to vector, you can actually see the point list, and so this will actually designate uh, a number for each of these points. You can see that um, from this component it produces the cells, which are each of these cells, and also the points. So if I plug in P to P here, that'll give me the center of each of these cells, and then the S stands for size. So if I use one of these sliders, that's the size of the text that it's displaying. So I can increase that or reduce that. And you can see that this would be a list of lists, and you can get that just from the numbers. And you can also see in the fancy wire that it's a, du a double dashed line, which means it's a list of lists. And if you look at this, um, you can see that every list always starts with zero. So this would be one list, that would be a second list, and a third list, and a fourth list. So um, that's a useful way just to kind of understand how the data is being compiled and organized within Grasshopper.